Okay, we're now at an exciting part of our tutorial. We're ready to import the pressure loads from Fluent to Mechanical. This is what the FSI simulation is all about. This process is extremely easy. If we close Mechanical and go back to our project schematic, we simply have to drag the solution cell from the CFD to the setup cell of the FEA. Now we'll go back in Mechanical by double clicking on Setup and click yes for this message. You'll notice that a new folder just appeared right here. To import the pressure loads we need to right click this folder and insert pressure. We then have to specify the matching boundary between the CFD and the FEA. It's important that these surfaces match in order to successfully execute this FSI simulation. So at the top, we need to choose the blade surface from the FEA. We can change the scoping method to name selection. And click the blade surface. And down here, we can select the blade surface from the CFD which we called blade. Finally, we right click on import pressure and select import load. All right, isn't this pretty cool? So one difference to note between the pressure visualization between mechanical and CFD post is that one is using vectors and the other is using contours. So here we have a vector representation. So all the gauge pressures are denoted as being positive. So the color scheme here is only denoting magnitude. But these vectors in fact have an orientation because they're vectors after all. In CFD post, the contour map showed both negative and positive gauge pressures within its color scheme. One good takeaway from this picture is that the region of low fluid pressures as seen in CFD post are contributing enormously to the pressure load experienced by the blade. It makes sense because the blade has a net difference in pressure between its front and back face and so the blade will tend to be forced toward the side that has lower pressure. Now take a look at the report located right here under imported pressure. It's very important to check that these forces between the CFD and the FEA match sufficiently. What's happening is that we have two different meshes between the FEA and the CFD. This in effect leads to some mapping and interpolation in this transfer of data. This is why these values differ a bit. If your mesh is too coarse, then the mapping and interpolation will not be accurate, and these values will be very far from each other, which would lead to erroneous results. Finally, make sure that this statement down here says that 100% of the nodes have been mapped. 